ですねイレイザーヘッドエピソード6 is here and oh my goodness Welcome back to Minx and I'll be breaking down the 6th episode of My Hero Academia season 7 This episode looks so amazing It is titled Division sharing the same title as chapter 345 of the manga And for real, this episode was something else I did not think these chapters would be adapted so well in the anime I'm really very happy with the episode It starts with a flashback where All Might explains a plan to class 1A The plan involves using Shinso, who we haven't seen in a while and his brainwashing quirk to outsmart All for One, who has a way of detecting lies. Shinzo has trained his quirk to the point where he can now make people talk under his control. With Aoyama also joining the hero's side, it will be even easier to trick All for One into a false sense of security. We get additional shots of Aoyama's parents in All for One, as well as a glimpse of Shinzo using his brainwashing quirk to control the Aoyama family at the hospital. We get to see Monoma with Vlad and Aizawa, and He has actually appeared after a long time in the anime and it's explained that he needs to master Kurogiri's quirk now within the next few days because he will be playing a very important role in this war. There are also flashbacks to a young Monoma and new scenes from the day of the war showing villains and heroes emerging from the portals. This moment with all the heroes and villains rushing out of the portals is a clear reference to the iconic portal scene in Avengers Endgame. The scene shifts to All Might at the hospital commanding the heroes. The anime doesn't show the hospital but it does include an additional scene with All for One, the League of Villains, Deku and the heroes. Shigaraki tries to use his decay by touching the ground but his body doesn't let him. Dabi races past him aiming to attack other heroes but Shoto counters Dabi's flames with his eyes as he comes out through a portal to confront his brother. Dabi was really insane at this point and felt like he was expressing his true emotions. All Might then activates Operation Troy, causing a series of metal cages to emerge from the ground and trap most of the villains. Monoma opens more portals, sending the caged villains to different locations around Japan. Toga sees Deku on the battlefield before the cage closed and tells the other villains to break the cage open. As Dabi melts his cage open, he sees Shoto as they both clash with each other. After the clash, Toga and Ochako get added shots as well and the other heroes pushing the cages. Through the portals, one of the heroes pushing the cages happens to be Crust's sidekick that seemingly has a quirk similar to Crust and there isn't much we know about him but this could be Crust's relative possibly as we know that Crust died during the paranormal liberation war arc. Continuing on, Deku is about to help push Shigaraki through the portal, he gets pulled through another portal. Bakugo notices this but is unable to do anything as he himself is warped to the place where Shigaraki is supposed to be. Now, all the main leaders of the villains are separated along with lots of pro heroes. Fat Gum and Aoyama and some other heroes are left to fight the villains that weren't trapped in cages. Monoma returns to Aizawa and we get added shots of a screen showing the locations of where all the villains got sent to. Here we see that All for One and Endeavor's team got sent to Gunga Villa. In the anime, Hawks is actually removed from the shot of them all entering the site as the anime adds a little shot of Hawks appearing behind All for One. When All for One recognizes the location, the anime adds a shot of the Metal Liberation Army mansion being there as a before and after shot as well as a shot showing a different location on the map giving us another shot of All Might's statue in Kamino where Dabi and Shoto once again stand face to face. And this scene seems a bit weaker compared to the manga as there are no flames around Shoto's feet plus the anger shown in the manga made this moment feel a lot more epic. After this we get an added scene of All Might at the HQ before moving on to the sky above UA, we get an added shot of Mirko, Bakugo and the others coming out of portals. Bakugo tells best scene is that Deku isn't there and we get shots showing location of Okuta Island and Deku coming through a portal where it's revealed that Toga was the one who pulled him. Froppy even gets added into the scene of Ochako asking why Deku was there and he was supposed to be with Shigaraki. We got a shot of the floating UA called Coffin in the Sky which has been specifically built to deal with Shigaraki's decay. The anime replaced this cool shot of Bakugo and the others in mid-air after coming out of the portals. Shigaraki sees that he's the only villain there. He tells himself to not stop himself like he did earlier in the episode where his body stopped himself from decaying everything. As he was going to decay UA when he lands and starts decaying the ground, the floor springs out of the ground sending him flying towards the electromagnetic barrier. Best genius uses his fibers to grab Shigaraki slamming and dragging him down to the ground. We get some amazing animation here as Shigaraki decays the fibers that are constantly attacking him thanks to Jason Yao who worked on this entire Shigaraki sequence. It looked really smooth and was entertaining to watch him move that rapidly. It's revealed that 
The reason the floor sprung up from the ground was due to the heroes implementing this anti-decay mechanism where as soon as the floor is being decayed they eject to prevent decay from spreading. Best Genius then tells Shigaraki that this arena will be his coffin in the sky. This is when we get to see other heroes underneath UA creating and replacing the floors. The anime adds an entire scene showing Cementos and the others building the arena in the air. We get an extended scene of Shigaraki fighting the heroes giving us shots of him dodging Best Genius fibers and Ejiro using her quirk with Bakugo's explosion firing it back at Shigaraki and Mirko is going in for a kick to Shigaraki's head. As Shigaraki tries to hit Best Genius with a shockwave, it's revealed that Monoma copied Aizawa's quirk. He's currently erasing Shigaraki's quirks, giving the heroes the same advantage they did during the Paranormal Liberation War arc. There is an added shot of Deku and the other heroes gathering behind him as Aizawa states that this was supposed to be a plan that could have been best if Deku was there, but he isn't. After this, we get an added scene of Mirko once again going in to fight Shigaraki while in midair. Shigaraki turns around, revealing his arm growing a massive amount of fingers due to him being being able to control the quirk singularity. Mirko then gets hit by all of the fingers and we get added shots of all the heroes reactions. The episode ends with Shigaraki calling Aizawa let down. This scene was pretty gruesome and I think the anime adapted it pretty well. We got a lot of new shots which made this ep a lot better than I had expected. This episode adapted a total of 3 chapters them being 344, 345 and 346. The war has kicked up in such a big way where I legit can't wait for the next episode. The animation was just so clean this episode and I can't wait to see what they cook up for the later ones. And there are some very cool matchups coming like All for One vs Endeavor and Shoto and Dabi. Let me know your thoughts on this episode. Did you enjoy it or did you dislike it? Which fight are you most excited for? And I think I'll give this episode an 8 out of 10. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and stay tuned for more My Hero Academia videos by subscribing to my channel. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for sticking till the end and I'll see you guys next week.